हेलो आई एम पारित शर्मा एंड माई ट्यूटर इज मिस्टर सोहेल खान एंड नाउ वी आर गोन टू स्टार्ट आर न्यू चैप्टर विच इज़ अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फ्रॉम जे पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू विच इज़ पी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स तो नाउ वी स्टार्ट पी ब्लॉक तो पी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट्स आर फ्रॉम ग्रुप थर्टीन टू ग्रुप एटीन पी ब्लॉक के जो एलिमेंट हैं वो ग्रुप थर्टीन से ग्रुप एटीन है और सोहेल इनको पी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट क्यों कहते हैं इनको पी ब्लॉक एलिमेंट इसलिए बोलते हैं क्योंकि जिसमें लास्ट इलेक्ट्रॉन होता है वो पी शेल में आता है ओके okay. इस वजह से इसमें पी ब्लॉक में हमें सिक्स और सिक्स ग्रुप हैं सिक्स ग्रुप इसलिए होते हैं क्योंकि जो इसमें जब हम इसका ऑर्बिटल बनाते हैं तो इसमें छः इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आ सकते हैं सिक्स इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आते हैं तो अपोजिट स्पिन के आते हैं वो तुम तो जानते ही उन रूल्स के हिसाब से तो आगे बढ़ते हैं सो so, ग्रुप नंबर किसी भी एलिमेंट का निकालने के लिए उसमें उसके बैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन में टेन जोड़ने में उसका ग्रुप नंबर मिल जाता है जैसे कि बोरोन का एग्जाम्पल लेते हैं उसके इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगेशन लिखते हैं वन एस टू टू एस टू टू पी वन तो इसके बैलेंस इलेक्ट्रॉन कितने हुए तीन हुए प्लस वन सो तो टेन में जब थ्री ऐड करते हैं तो टेन प्लस थ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन वी गेट थर्टीन सो इसका एलिमेंट सो इसका ग्रुप नंबर थर्टीन हो गया सो अब नाव वी मूव टूवर्स ग्रुप थर्टीन विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड बोरोन फैमिली तो इसके जो एलिमेंट्स हैं उनका नाम है बोरोन एल्यूमिनियम गैलियम इंडियम थैलियम और इसको याद करने के लिए हमारे अच्छा तरीका से आप याद कर सकते हैं बाल गंगाधर इन थैलिया इसे आपको बहुत अच्छे से याद रहेगा ये हाँ आप भूलेंगे नहीं एक बार में याद रहेगा और ग्रुप थर्टीन की जो जनरल कॉन्फ़िगरेशन है इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फ़िगरेशन उसको एन एस टू एन पी वन है तो इसके एलिमेंट्स जो हैं वो हमने ऑलरेडी मेंशन किए हैं बोरोन एल्यूमिनियम गैलियम इंडियम थैलियम जो बोरोन है वो नॉन मेटल है एल्यूमिनियम गैलियम और इंडियम मेटल है और एज द मेटेलिक कैरेक्टर इंक्रीज डाउन द ग्रुप यस बिकॉज द साइज ऑल्सो इंक्रीज डाउन एटोमिक रेडियस इंक्रीज वाइल मूविंग डाउन द ग्रुप बट दे इज एन एक्सेप्शन डेट गैलियम एंड एल्यूमिनियम इज ऑलमोस्ट द सेम साइज ओके ओके एंड द इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिक्रीज डाउन द ग्रुप दे इज नो एक्सेप्शन इन डेट ओके नाउ मूव टू द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट्स ओके ऑन मूविंग डाउन द ग्रुप स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द लोअर ऑक्सीडेशन इंक्रीज तो हम देख सकते हैं कैसे ग्रुप थर्टीन में जैसे प्लस वन और प्लस थ्री है तो लोअर ऑक्सीडेशन प्लस स्टेट प्लस वन है जैसे जैसे हम नीचे जाते हैं तो आप देख सकते हैं कि जाते जाते जो इसकी स्टेबिलिटी है वो इंक्रीज हो रही है पर प्लस थ्री जो हायर ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट है जिसमें हम नीचे जा रहे हैं तो कम होती जा रही है मतलब ऊपर जाने पे बढ़ेगी और नीचे जाने पे कम होगी ओके सोहेल कैन यू एक्सप्लेन व्हाई दिस इज हैपनिंग दिस इज कॉल्ड इनर पेयर अफेक्ट ओके ओके सो दिस इज दिस फैक्ट वर्क इन एवरी ग्रुप फोर्टीन ऑल्सो ग्रुप फोर्टीन प्लस टू प्लस फोर एंड ग्रुप फिफ्टीन प्लस थ्री प्लस फाइव ओके इन एवरी ग्रुप दिस हैपन्स ओके ग्रुप थर्टीन ग्रुप फोर्टीन एंड ग्रुप फिफ्टीन ओके एंड इट्स ड्यू टू इनर पेयर इनर पेयर अफेक्ट बाई दिस वी एंड दिस वीडियो As I have already mentioned, there well, we move the stability of the lower oxidation state increases while moving down the group. Due to it inert due, pair effect. It is due to inert pair effect. So now I will explain what is that inert pair effect. Okay. So firstly, write the heading. Inert pair effect. So as we know, while moving down the group, the atomic size increases. This is let's say it is nucleus. So let us take an example of aluminium. So its alum its configuration will be that one uh, one gas will come and three s two three p one and let's take an example of thallium also. Then six s two s two and six p one. So as I have told it, stability of lower oxidation state increases down the group. As we take that aluminium, 3s2 and 3p1, both the electron can be easily taken out. As they are, the s orbital and p orbital are not so much far from the nucleus. And Because as, the size of aluminium atom is small. Yes, more. yes. And then thallium atom size is so much big. As 6s2 and 6p1 are so far, 6s is so close to the nucleus. As 6p1 is so far. so it is easier to take the p electron from p shell but it is very tough to take the electron from 6s but in aluminum the both 3s2 and 3p1 are can be easily taken out 3s2 3p1 electron can be easily taken out that's why aluminum plus 3 can be easily made but 6s2 electron cannot be taken from thallium so thallium plus 3 cannot be easily made that's why the stability 
going down the groove of lower excitation state and, increases and this is called inert pair effect yeah this is the inert pair effect basic because the pair of electrons in the s orbital are behaving as inert yeah this one so now move to the, the diagonal relationship the boron and aluminum resemble the same physical and chemical properties that's why they have given the name they are having the diagonal relationship now we move towards the important compounds of boron which are important in the j point of syllables and uh, b2s6 which is also called diborane so this is uh, this is the structure of b2s6 okay so this is the bond which is dash and wedge structure which is inside and this one is outside and this this one is a single bond and this one is considered as a single bond and which is named as three center two electron bond okay so p2s6 has three center two electron bond and then their number is 2 okay the number of three center two electron bonds is 2 yeah now and so hell can you explain why it is called three center two electron bond yeah because there are three center this one first second and three first second and third so three center one two and three and two electron move here and there in this okay that's why it's called three center two electron bond now move to the next the reactions of diborane or b2s6 okay now i classify the bases here firstly for the reactions okay the heavy bases which is called example sir na3 or 3 degree amines and any 3 degree r can be anything okay and light bases are examples ns3 rns2 or r2 ns means 2 degree and 1 1 degree and 2 degree okay so let's take an example of light base means this type of bases when react with b2s6 they do means i have written that heavy bases causes symmetrical cleavage means here it is not symmetric symmetrical cleavage because if it is symmetrical then bs3 half and bs3 half will be divided here you can see when heavy bases react with b2s6 then they have been separated or symmetrically means they, they cleave diborane yeah. symmetrically here you can see it is 2 bs3 by 3 symmetrically but in light bases case it is not done symmetrically it has been divided here means bh2 and bh4 here that's why it's called symmetrical and unsymmetrical cleavage now move towards the al2cl6 ha huh. al2cl6 if it, if bridge atom has lone pair then three center four electron bond exists and if it not then three center two electron bond will be there here you can see that the bridging atom means hydrogen do not have lone pair that's why it is having three center two electron bond as i have already mentioned above now move toward al2cl6 this is the structure of al2cl6 as i have already mentioned whenever the bridged bridged atom means cl here has lone pair then the bond will be three center four electron bond so one three center four electron bond and this one is second three center four electron bond so there are in total two three center four electron bond yes he is right Now next move to the borax, which is very important for J. Na2B4 7.2NH2O, but its correct formula represented by this one. Okay, so its structure is given here. It contains this, this bonds, 4 OH here, and 2 Na plus outside. Okay, so charge is B minus B minus 2 minus, and it is by. It is balanced by 2 balanced sodium. Balanced by 2 sodium ions. plus. Yes. This is very important structure. Now move towards the important test, which is borax B test. It is basically for transition metals. Okay. Now whenever the Na two B four or seven or ten H two means borax is heated, we get Na B O two and B two O three. Okay. And whenever this beads B two O three is reacted with cobalt oxide, we get a blue bead C O B O O two whole twice. and it's a blue color whenever it is burned in the bunsen burner with the help of which we can identify metal cobalt yes and it is very very important for je it has been already in asked one time in je yes now I'll move to the important next bond structure boric acid and a boric acid structure is this one and it has boh boh this is its one unit okay 
so which is also called one fan unit because it has one fan like structure because it looks like a fan yeah yeah that's one and it contains hydrogen bonded oxygen and hydrogen that gives its stability to the boric acid and one more thing you should note that yeah. that per one molecule of boric acid six hydrogen bonds are being formed yeah is right can you show them so here uh, this one is one two three four and this one will be five and this one will be the sixth one yeah okay ab um, now we move towards the group 14 that is also called carbon family so the general electronic configuration is ns2 and np2 okay so the elements of group 14 are carbon silicon germanium tin lead so we can write hum isko acche se yaad kar sakte hain kuch tricks hain jaise ki kahe sita ji sune parvati isse hum aasani se isko yaad kar sakte hain okay now next point is that atomic radius increases down the group jaise jaise hum niche jaate hain aur atomic radius padta hai isme okay or uh, now there is important property that is called catenation property that which is, means the tendency of an atom to bind with an atom yeah. with a similar atom yes carbon form different compounds in organic you see that it form number of bonds means c c polymer chains continues continues this is this is called the catenation property but silicon has less 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 than carbon and germanium and tin already almost they are same catenation property which is negligible this we are, we can see that it is almost negligible now we move to the important silicon compounds now this is si cl4 when react with h2o when h2 attack on it then cl go out then we get minus scl from here or this scl get out from this and we got si cl is substituted by oh okay okay and the three different cl are in the same position now and again three times the h2 attack three times and we get si oh whole four which is called silicic, silicic acid. acid it is very important acid now move move to where sio2 which is also called silica and its structure is so important for je means and advanced point of view this is also called cage like structure you can see that a cage is forming by silica and, and oxygen, oxygen. that's why it's called cage like structure now we move to where the important thing of the which is also called silicones uh, silicones is a polymer of silicon polymers of silicon which is obtained by the hydrolysis of organosilicon halides organosilicon halides are these ones okay okay the linear chain silicons obtained by the hydrolysis of r2c sicl2 means the chain this one is linear linear chain silicon which is obtained by the hydrolysis means h reaction with water of r2 sicl2 to give this now the silic the chlorine atoms in r2 sicl are replaced by water to form si to form si oh oh r and r which yeah. polymerizes to give silicones yes when it polymerizes gives the linear chain silicon which is obtained by the hydrolysis of r2 sicl2 now move toward if we use a limited amount of h2o in place of the, the two air we have used if we use a limited amount of h2o we will get this type of structure it is called as cyclic structure cyclic silicate. silicone okay cyclic silicones now now we are mentioning this r3 r3 sicl it is added as a stopping unit means if you want to stop this Chain. polymerization yeah if you want to stop this polymerization you have to add this r3 sicl which is act as a stopping unit because this one you can see that here if we add this one no oh and h is there so no loss of hydrogen and, and no more there. monomers can be attached yes so that the no, length the of the chain basic is basic mechanism i am explaining oh, so whenever to R2 Si OH hold twice reacts. So one loss of hydrogen H2O is taken place and H2O is taken place. So if one hydrogen goes 
1 over h goes from here then h will goes from the same atom and if h from this over h from this so this is the basic loss of h2 is taking place and a chain means linear chain is obtaining in this manner okay now we move towards the next important topic that is types of silicates so first type of silicate is ortho silicate okay this one so hill can you explain what are silicates uh, silicates are the polymers of which are network polymers of this made which is made up of silicon and oxygen basically okay, okay? Okay, so they are polymeric compounds of oxygen, oxygen and silicon, and silicon. which form a network structure. Yeah, yeah. Now we move to our ortho silicates, and ortho silicate consists silicon and four oxygen and four negative charge. So its formula will be Si O four four minus. Okay. Okay, and when we weigh it from the top, it will look like this structure. Means this point is considered a silicon. and this is considered as first oxygen this is second this is four third and this one is fourth and four negative charge on the four oxygen so we get the formula sio4 four minus now move towards the pyrosilicates okay and pyro means whenever the two molecules combine and one h2 is lost we use the pyro prefix that's what here we are using here this bond is formed when by the loss of a h2 So okay you are trying to say that when two molecules combine by the removal of H2O then that molecule is called a pyro molecule yeah this is two molecules of any compound H2O is lost when we got the pyro compound okay here the, this is the general formula of the pyro silicates and we can also get, get this formula by alternate way by counting it means one silicon one silicon two So we get Si2 and O7 means first oxygen, second oxygen, third oxygen, fourth, fifth, sixth, and this one is seven. So we get the general formula Si2 O7 two minus. Now move towards the ring silicates. Okay. Okay. So it is a general formula Si3 O9 six minus. It is a it is a specific formula for this three ring three units. ring silicate and its general formula is SiO3 n and 2n minus so hell are we supposed to remember these formulas no there is a bus we have there is a general trick for it yes this is general formula so we we are getting one silicon here and one oxygen here one oxygen is here means two oxygen one one this one second this one and this this one is shared a half half between the two this one is shared half by this and this one is shared half by this oxygen is shared half by this and this one this and this half by this and half by this so one one here two here two and a half and finally three so okay. this there we get the general formula okay so the effective number of oxygen per silicon atom is 3 3 that's why its general formula is this one Now move towards the next that is called chain silicates, and this one is forming a chain like this, going this way and this way. It is extending both the sides. That's why they are called chain, chain silicates. silicates. Okay, and its one unit is SiO three n two n minus. And again, same thing can be done. Silicon is one, oxygen here one. This is two, and half is shared. Half is shared. So two and a half and three. So we got the general formula SiO three and two and all minus. Okay. 